Here we have why, it. Why isn't my own father doing this? Yep. Some, some emotional authority. It's kind of emotional. I lie. Emotional for who, though? Who is that emotional for? I don't know. I think because I'm sure that everyone has said that in their own time. Everyone has, like, I'm sure there's a family member or a friend that you feel like they aren't doing well. There's probably someone in, in your life that's, like, fucking up mm-hmm. and not doing what they're supposed to yeah. or not. So it's like, it would be so easier if they followed my advice, you know, but then they don't. Yeah. I thought this was an interesting headline because like it's from the perspective of Kelly Brown. So in this promo, there's a woman, Kelly, oh, Brown. Kelly Brown wrote this. Yeah. Okay, you know cool. Kelly? Yeah. I, I was interviewing with her. Um, well, I didn't, she, she wasn't there at the interview, but I interviewed with Stansberry. Yeah. Right. So yeah, this is her promo and this is, this promo is a demonstration of an option strategy that uses Kelly Brown's dad as the as the person being demonstrated, right? Okay. So like, why isn't my own father doing this? That's Kelly Brown asking that question about her own father. And I thought it's an interesting headline because like trying to get that crossover millennial appeal and crossover appeal into women because you're using Kelly Brown. So I feel like, yeah. I don't know. I wonder how it worked. I wonder if they actually marketed it, like sent this promo out to women and sent it out to, to a younger and younger demographic to see how it, how it went. Um, did you, you pulled this from like their email? Like, was this a swipe? Yeah, it's from the email. It's like, okay. They're testing a new headline with it now. So I guess this headline didn't do well with their already existing demographic. So they changed it. Yeah. But I thought this was an interesting headline to use outside of Ogor's. No, I think I think this headline hits because it's definitely emotional. And I'm like I said, I think everyone has said this at that point in time. Why isn't my own brother doing this? Why isn't my own why aren't my friends doing this? You know, like if there's something that you, you know, real, cause I felt that way. I feel like, you remember that thing that I told you about, like how I save money, like when my bank account has change in it, I take the change and just round it out and then move it into a stash it into account. I feel that way. Why isn't everyone doing this? Is everyone, if everyone did what I do, um, they would be better off or at least, you know, you know, financially, they'd be saving money. They have more money than they know what to do with it. So, yeah, I'm telling you, that headline slaps because definitely connects with me. Like, yeah. All right, so going down, we have, uh, she explains who her father is, you know, New York police chief who's never traded stocks in his life, 66 years old. So he's like the perfect, he's like the avatar of um, the Agora financial customer, you know what I mean? A guy, retired, retired, mm-hmm. never traded stocks before, kind of skeptical. Like, that's the perfect avatar. And this is a demonstration. So you're taking that avatar and you're turning him into a customer. And I feel like the whole, the demonstrations work so well because it's like the ultimate social proof and you know we all exactly know, yeah social proof is like the biggest the easiest way to sell someone something right oh yeah hell yeah mm-hmm. and like we have this demonstration here with the perfect guy the perfect avatar yeah so simple strategy. I, bro. <laughs> yeah because if a 66 year old can do it you know yeah why can't you <laughs> No offense to the to the boomer generation. <laughs> this stuff here, what something that I didn't really notice before before today when I was reading this copy is that Sansbury uses a whole bunch of testimonials. And they use them often. So 
And I was wondering, like, why do they use so many testimonials and why do they use them when they use them in the copy, right? And I, yeah. think, I think I have an idea. Okay, so that think is. They use testimonials as proof immediately after they make some kind of promise. You know? Yeah. So we have this one strategy is behind some of the biggest profits ever, right? That's like an implied promise. One strategy, mm. profits ever. And then immediately you get into the testimonials right after that. Joe D made 360,000, right? And Eric G made 10,000 in a month, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have this huge wall of testimonials. Because Stansbury has dope products, they have a bunch of uh, really good testimonials, of course. But the way they use it is really strategic. So they just take a promise, whatever promise, it could be a direct promise or implied, and they just testimonial to illustrate that promise. And I feel like that's huge. That's huge social proof. Social proof and it's proof that your strategy works. This whole promo, this whole promo is built on the idea of social proof. <laughs> Yeah, social proof in the demonstration and social proof in the testimonials. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely that can make anything, like any copy stronger, you know. Um, All right. So what are a few examples of like, or do they have a video of the demonstration? Do they actually show the dad you know, executing this trade, yeah. like in a VSL or something. Yeah, I, I'll put a link to the video in the chat. Let's see if I can. Do oh that. yeah, that's that's yeah. I that I think that is the new trend in Agora. Like, like because they've done so much of. I mean, testimonials are always great, but now we're like with the you know with the claims getting bigger and all that stuff. Having demonstrations is like the new trend yeah. that I that I'm seeing in Agora. And I think part of the reason why is because the, the system's promos are getting kind of old. You know, they're getting kind of stale. Yeah, so, there is very some saturation. Yeah. And so you have, to, you have to really show it. You have to show that you're real. Let's see, I've got the, yeah. to the thing here. Let's see if I can open this chat. That's the, the link to the video if you want to check out the video, the actual demonstration. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, they do all the stuff that we've been talking about for the past few weeks, you know. Remember in Dan, uh, yeah, Donnie's promo? Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how he taps into his prospect's desire to be a winner. Mm -hmm. We have this thing, a 95% win rate for nearly a decade. 68 wins in a row without a single loss right so you're tapping into your prospects desire to be a winner here but here's something else that i saw that was interesting Let's see. the prospect's biggest fear isn't that he won't win a lot of money, right? He's not worried about getting a lot of money. He's retired. He's He already has a plan for his retirement, So and he's comfortable with that plan. He just wants to make sure that nothing changes about that plan, right? <laughs> right? He, doesn't yeah, yeah. Lose, yeah. he doesn't want to lose money and lose out yeah. opportunities that may or may not have happened. Yeah, because I'm sure everyone has that fear. People fear uh, people fear losing more than they do winning, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And if you mentioned options to the average, like, trader or someone who doesn't know, like, they immediately get scared. If you mention, I, I don't even know much about options, but if you mention that to me, I'm just like, nah, man, that's that's for, like, gladi like, 
that's like traders going head to head in the in the Coliseum, like in the, in the gladiator match. You know, <laughs> that's basically what options is. So it's very like to the death, or that is my whole perception of it. There is a fear of that. So if they address that fear in the yeah. copy too, that's I mean that's good. Absolutely, and they do address that fear. This whole promotion is about addressing the general fear that most people have of options. This whole promo is just knocking that fear out of the park. Right? Okay, yeah, that's great. Uh, let's see. Because there's there's like her and there's this trader and her, her dad. So they're, they're, they're taking her through this, like, I mean, him through this step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And so I even have that here, what you were saying, right? big bad big bad options they reveal the strategy they say straight up in most promos you never see this you'll never see the editor admit i'm trading options you know what i mean and yeah. like we're at page five or six right now and it's like right here at the beginning the guy says it straight up i'm trading options right and yeah that, that creates that tension you're talking about right like People feel that fear, so they have the tension. Oh shit, I'm trading options, what am I getting myself into? But then, right after that, right here, he says the truth is most options are dangerous, right? He says you're right to be suspicious. Most <laughs> options are dangerous, right? Yeah. And so that kind of eases the tension and keeps the reader engaged with the promo, I feel like. That's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, you're not belittling the the reader or like patronizing them or trying to get something over them. I feel like, yeah, there are sometimes when you're reading copy and you're trying to like you still don't know what they're talking about. I know I felt that way in some promos um, until you know you get to like halfway through and then you realize they're talking about dividends and I'm just like, oh, come on, dude. <laughs> So yeah, so the fact that they get right into it, I mean that's kind of a relief. That's something fresh. That's that seems fresh to me because I've just I've just been like like yeah, come on, let's get to the point. And you know, even if I have objections, they are just like even if I have those objections, they've already addressed them. Mm -hmm like yeah and he's right yeah don't bull i like that he's not bullshitting the reader like yeah he's like and most most options are and that's the truth that's exactly what i was talking about i would never get into option trading because i don't know what i'm doing yeah but apparently this guy's strategy is easy and low risk that's the huge selling point for this guy okay and he How? that it's not risky by saying how he discovered the strategy. So he said, I first learned about it by, because he was like, you know, he worked on Wall Street for these big banks. And you know, a big bank, Fidelity, Prudential, Oppenheimer, they never want to lose money. And so he came up with the strategy so that those big banks can trade without risking a lot of money, without risking losing money. And so I feel like, oh man, yeah. that's cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that's something that adds a lot to his credibility. But is that proof per se? I I feel like it's well, proof. Yeah, it serves as proof. Like, it's not proof in like the sense of like a courtroom or anything like this. <laughs> it's like proof. It's proof that this option strategy is legit and it's not risky because Fidelity uses it, Prudential uses it, or they use mm -hmm. it in the past, right? Yeah, that's proof. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see, you got more confirming suspicions over here. He says, he goes on to say that options are still dangerous. I would never t touch most of the strategies on my own, but this one is different. And 
he makes it easy for the prospect by saying you don't need any special education here. Mm, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And right here, what do we have? We have, I said, this is the last frontier for the honest investor because he says the strategy evens the playing field. And you, that's the theme that you see a lot of in financial copy. You always oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. the game is rigged against you. They don't want you to win, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and, like I'm, I'm here to help the little guy because, you know, I was a big banks. Basically that whole Robin Hood. Yeah. And drum. And the fact that this is a live demo and they have Kelly and Kelly's father here doing it makes it extremely relatable to the audience because apparently this is Kelly's first time setting up a brokerage account, right? Her first time trading stocks and her father's first time also. And so like most people are in that position. Most people have no clue how the financial markets work and how they engage with them. Let's see. Right here, this is the section where, you know, we meet Kelly's dad. Mm -hmm. You know, we get his background so that you can care about him a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's also a good technique. Um, usually that's done with, with, the, with the gurus, with them telling their story, you know, going through their hero's journey. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but when you you put that spotlight on a regular person, yeah, it can definitely make it more relatable. I can see that. I like the, I like that you brought up the hero's journey because with this demonstration, the hero is the reader, and it's mm -hmm. the reader through the avatar of Scott Brown. Scott Brown is exactly. the avatar. And mm -hmm. Scott Brown is the one in this promo who's going through the hero's journey. Yeah. And so, like, by the time the per your prospect finishes this promotion, assuming that they're anything like Scott Brown, right, they're, they're all about it. They're ready to go. And will Scott yeah. collect $1,000 in mere minutes? That just sets up the story. Right? That's, That's, a, just sets up the a, strong, that's a strong dumb head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, builds a lot of anticipation. I like that. And like Doc, have you do you, you know the hero's journey, right? So Doc is the is like the mentor, the wise mentor who like coaches you through. Mm -hmm. And I guess Kelly's role is just like, you know, partner in crime. Yeah, just facilitating. Yeah. So yeah, you got his big fear. The prospect's biggest fear isn't that he won't make enough money. His biggest fear is that he'll lose everything that he has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You build a strategy, we're selling put options here. This is proof of, or demonstrating how the strategy works, kind of. Okay. I really like how Doc explains things here because he does two things pretty well. One, he has like a good kind of coaching tone. You yeah. know, like good at taking big concepts and breaking them down so people can understand them. Mm -hmm. And he does some cool things like some classic uh, in-person sales techniques in this promo. Okay. When he asked Doc, or when he when Doc asked Scott, what is your biggest, what's your worst case scenario? Right? That's a classic sales question, right? That's what you that's I used to do that as a personal trainer when I was working at the gym, trying to find mm -hmm. people to join the gym. I'll be like, so if you don't join the gym, what's what's the worst case scenario? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that's good. That's that's really, really strong. Like I go back you know, living my same life. I keep being fat or I keep being unhealthy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. 
And then it's like, well, you don't have to worry about that because here's the solution. Like, here, here I am because I'm the coach. Exactly. Word. So here we have a promise of feeling secure. And then right after that promise of feeling secure. So remember his biggest fear. We just established his biggest fear is losing it all. And that mm -hmm. comes from that comes from a feeling of insecurity, right? Anxiety around being insecure. Right. And so Kelly promises, no, you'll be secure. And then immediately after that promise, we have testimonials to prove the feeling of being secure. All right. And the trade begins. This is the actual start of the story of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then like he walks him through it. Yep. Log into your brokerage account step by step. Yeah. Yep. And they take away the objection of, I don't know how to open up a brokerage account or like it's expensive to open a brokerage account. It's expensive to trade stocks. They got rid of all those. Nah. Yeah. Not in this day and age. Yeah. This is the secret sauce. This is the sauce. What the, what's here? Ah. So yeah, they really reveal the entire strategy here because they say that he does this put, he sells put options, but only on safe blue chip stocks. And that's how his win rate is so high and what makes the strategy so safe almost, like not risky. Okay. Because you're trading these put options on stocks that you would want to buy anyway. Right? Yeah. And so even if your options trade, even if you lose on that deal, you're still buying a really good stock that's likely going to pay you dividends in the future and, of course, continue to grow in the future. So, like, you'll recoup your losses eventually. And that's how he came up with that 95% win rate. You know what put options are exactly or what that process looks like? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what put options are. So like Yo, so watch the promo, you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, he breaks it down. He makes it really simple. Okay. Uh, basically it's like a put option. An option is an agreement to buy 100 shares of a stock at a certain price at a certain time, right? Okay. So we'll say there's you and me, right? Mm. And we're, we're talking about Disney stock. And you want to buy a put option of Disney stock, right? So what that means is you believe that Disney stock is going to tank in the next two months is going to go down by 20 percent and you believe that honestly in your heart <laughs> yeah you buy the put see that. Yeah. you buy the put option and if it works you win the trade whatever <laughs> yeah okay so, yeah then you just gave away money to me who sold you the put option mm -hmm. And that's the strategy that's being used here. All right, cool. Here's something cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I see how. The, yeah, okay, I see how it works. So it's kind of like you. It's a win-win situation. You can't lose because if, yeah. even if the stock tanks, you're yeah. able to buy it for cheap or anything like that. Yeah, you buy it for cheaper, and you still get the dividend that comes with it. You still get whatever benefits come with owning that stock. Something interesting and here. Then, and then when it does, and then when it does tank eventually, that will, well, not within that time frame. Yeah. yeah. It's extremely yeah. unlikely that it will tank within that time frame. That's the thing about put options is that you need a specific stock, a specific time, and a specific price. And if all those things don't line up, 
Yeah, okay. The best way to profit from put options is to be the guy who is selling them. <laughs> because it's extremely unlikely that those three things will ever line up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, dude. We're at 30 minutes, so that's time. You have any comments, questions, concerns? Dan, you want to say something, man? <laughs> Them lurking in the cut this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, in fact, a question to you, generally speaking, um, do you only, well, every, do you try and read a promo a day, right? You still hold to that uh, kind of Agora mantra, one promo a day. Yeah. And do you keep to a particular niche or do you, do you no. read widely? I read widely. I read everything. Got it. Cool, cool, cool. No, I just wanted to, to, to understand your, your strategy with it. Obviously, if you were to niche down, you'd get more learnings within that particular niche. But then obviously, a, an idea can come from anywhere. So you might read a, a relationship promo and that might relate to something you're writing in health. So Exactly. Yeah, just wanted to hear. Exactly. That's why we do it. For example, yeah. in last week's copy call, it was a health promotion. And they did this thing where they put... Uh, like footnotes, like the number for the footnotes, like a little two right here and a little three right here, right? They did that and I was like, what would that look like in financial copy? I feel mm. like it, it adds a little bit of proof to whatever you're talking about. It gives it credit. Yeah, the re well, the reason they're doing it is because they're running Facebook traffic to it and they need all of those um, citations to, to get it approved, otherwise, that shit wouldn't be on Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if for financial it's as rigid. Um, do you think that actually helps the credibility by having the citations as a reader, as a consumer? I mean... Because I, I personally think they did it more for the compliance aspect rather than the these are proven claims. Right. But even still, like... The reader doesn't know about how Facebook ads work. You know what I mean? So like, I'm looking at this page I've never seen before and it has all these citations. I'm thinking, one, I probably, if, even if I know it's an ad, it's an ad that I trust immediately because it has those citations. I know it's well researched, it's well documented, right? And, even, and there is a chance that I might not even think it's an ad because it has those citations, right? So it's like, uh, I, I think that's your ideal situation, right? When, you're, when your reader doesn't even realize he's being sold to, right? When he's reading something that he doesn't even think is an ad, that's your ideal situation, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Good stuff. I think guys, I'm gonna shoot as well. But thanks again for doing this. Um, hope that I can be on the call earlier next week and actually do the markup beforehand. I've got um I've got a read a uh, remarkable tablet now, so it's so easy for me just to to go through and mark up PDF. So yeah, I'll I'll do it for next week. All right, cool, cool. Thanks Cheers, for guys. Take care. Yeah. All right, see you then. All right, thanks, Barry. See ya. Thanks for the call.